Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Nigel Sharp. From, I'm the chairman and founder of Odonata. Um, today, I'm, I'm really interested to uh, just go through the background of, of Odonata, our, our, how, how and why we were founded, and our approach to uh, landscape restoration, recovery, and, and working with uh, communities. The whole concept behind Odonata was to bring together biodiversity and business and apply business thinking into nature recovery. We've done that for a number of reasons. One, it's very difficult to continue to rely on philanthropy and grants to, to, to get nature to work. And the society that we work in, um, a capitalist society, we have to find ways to, to get nature to, to be funded. If we can empower landowners and entrepreneurs to work to bring the landscape back to life and, and revive and thrive um, as, part of, uh, as part of our mandate, that's, that would be the uh, success for us. We were founded in, in 2016 uh, following many years of work at Mount Rothwell that I'd done with Annette Rapalski. The concept originally was to um, bring together threatened species recovery. And of course, as we worked more with the threatened species, we discovered the importance of rebuilding ecosystems. And then in rebuilding ecosystems, we started to discover how our soil worked better, how our water retention worked better, and how nature can self-thrive given the chance. So we started designing programs around investment models to expand the Mount Rothwell experience. Um, and uh, that led us to a lot of thinking around which species to focus on and then how that can lead to a lot of, a lot of recovery work. So that's evolved now with the sanctuaries. We've worked uh, to develop a concept called SEASON, which is an acronym for Southeast Australian Sanctuary Operations Network. And we're working through Victoria and New South Wales and the ACT on multiple sanctuaries now. Uh, we've got five and we've got an objective to build 30 sanctuaries and have all of those uh, interconnected in a, um, in a community sense so that we can bring the best of all of the learnings together. That enables us to work with multiple landowners and uh, bring together all of our species work and bring together all the universities with the different expertise that we interact with, which probably leads me to collaboration and um, the reason we've had the success we've had is because we, we have a deep level of collaboration with the university network, with community networks, with government networks, with philanthropy, and uh, most importantly, with, uh, with business and investment. The species uh, that we started targeting have expanded. Initially, we were working with East Bar Bandicoot and Southern Brush Car Rock Wallaby. That's uh, expanded to the Eastern Quoll and the Eastern Beto and Bushstone Curlews and multiple other species that we take forward to help us discover how an ecosystem works. From there, it's enabled us to start looking at how that can work in agriculture and how that can also work in, in the urban infrastructure um, that we've got around the cities where the major populations exist. So business and nature, there is limited sources of funding in the traditional sense and, uh, and philanthropists are often relied upon and uh, is significant competition for philanthropy money and for grant money the government's put out there. So the investment model is probably the way to go. And um, I guess this year, well, 2020, last year, we started to see the alternative asset class of, of, of natural capital emerge. Uh, and a lot of uh, press and media around um, natural capital as an asset. And that, that's music to our ears because that's been the space we've been working in for a while. So that enables a lot more businesses to start thinking about investment models uh, and to work with us on, on how that investment in conservation can reduce biodiversity loss. Business and nature can work together very, very well. Uh, and uh, I think we're proving that. Now, I'm going to take you through some models today. The principles that we work to is what we call the seven C's. This has been for us a great way for us to think about projects and uh, investment money and getting the right outcomes. But it's also a great way to communicate with others on how we can think about um, landscape recovery and, uh, and stewardship of country. The seven C's is, is simple to understand, but not simplistic. We start with any project and look at the climate and how we can impact climate and do something positive and how we work with climate change within a project. We look at the corridor within the project that we're working, but how we fit into a much larger corridor for the region and, and broader. Creatures is uh, something we always lead with. This is, you know, looking at the threatened species that we could work with, but also any of the um, living beings in the area that we're working. 
Community is next and community interaction on many levels and how we collaborate lead to a really important, not just engagement, but more thinking and deeper thinking in how the seven C's can be productive. Culture as well. And uh, culture's the culture of our, not just our organisation, how we deal with other people. First Australians, and we've got a number of projects that are deeply engaged with traditional owners in Victoria. And then cash flow and capital appreciation. And uh, and this is the business part that we need to bring in nature thinking. So how, how can a project be funded? What are, what are all the different alternatives? From our perspective, over the years, we often get asked the question, what's the model? And uh, there are multiple models and and a project is dependent on how we view the whole of the seven Cs to come up with the cash flow. And same with the value of property or the impact on the value of the project or business that we're working with in relation to that. So it's very hard to actually take any of the seven Cs without contemplating the other six that are involved in this set of principles. We've got some projects which we'll run through today quickly to demonstrate the use of the seven Cs. But on the slide we've got on the screen there today, the long-term vision is, is quite obvious, and I've probably touched on that already, but looking at how biodiversity can be enhanced by business thinking. On this slide, you'll see we've got Mount Rothwell, the Tiverton Farm and the Tiverton Agriculture Impact Fund. And these are projects that we're working in the landscape uh, to improve biodiversity loss and uh, recovery of landscape. Mount Rothwell, um, if I just quickly apply the seven seas, it sits at the north end of the Yuyangs. It's part of a really important corridor between uh, the Yuyangs and the Victorian volcanic plains grassland. We've got three different habitat types on there, types on there, and that that allows us to work with multiple threatened species. Um, and also, we use that as our research centre on contemplating uh, um, financial models to to work. So we've got uh, we it, it, it's quite an easy one for us on the seven seas because the seven seas evolved um, through a lot of the Mount Rothwell work and how we were uh, connecting to each of those. The Tiverton Farm is a really interesting one in, in that that's, uh, we, we developed a grazing operation there to manage important grasslands and uh, basically emulated the uh, kangaroo movements through for a crash grazing model and uh, have seen you know, the native grasslands thrive with the grazing model. We then feral proof fence the place and we've recently reintroduced eastern bad bandicoots there and we'll be introducing eastern quolls there this year. So it's a farming funded model with um, um, a really high impact biodiversity recovery story that's overlaid. So it, it, it too ticks all of the seven C's, um, which each of our projects is the intent of. The Tiverton Ag Impact Fund is a, is a larger scale approach to um, applying the seven C's. There's a, a number of farms acquired in the Tiverton Impact Fund. And what we try and do is get a farm and then look at how the seven C's can be addressed within that farming financial model. Um, a great example there is um, we, we acquired an orchard, um, which uh, many of us would say, well, that's a, that's a monoculture. The intent there really is to look at that and say, well, how can we influence um, the biodiversity outcome? How can we think about corridors? How can we uh, have an impact, a positive impact on, on climate? And work with community and culture, so that was that was a great challenge for our team to start to start thinking about the application of the seven C's, and and probably for us we love the challenge. Uh, the, the more complex, um, more complex the project, the more we can work hard to see how we apply them. But it, the creature story, I think, is the most interesting one that happened on on the orchard. We had a a, a degraded wetland. Uh, on this orchard, which is basically 96% trees, orchard trees. And uh, after some discussions with the University of Western Sydney, um, we're working with them on a million turtle uh, recovery program for the Murray River. So we started look at, looking at the Murray River as our corridor, uh, the wetland there. We've done an enormous amount of work to, um, to restructure it so it can become a turtle breeding um, habitat. And... And then we involve the university, uh, well, the university is involved with us um, to, to look at how that whole breeding program can work and then the education that needs to go throughout the whole of the irrigation area as, as, we, as we breed up the turtle species and get them back into the whole of the Murray River habitat. So they're, they're, they're just a few examples of how we work in the landscape. We're also working in the urban fabric um, 
and trying to look at biodiversity sensitive urban design as a really important component for um, for people to enjoy nature living in in the cities and and in urban areas and and probably more importantly is how we look at cities city design in the future so that people can uh, enjoy nature but nature can thrive um, around humanity as well but again the seven seas principles we have found absolutely apply to the thinking of getting urbanism and um, and, and nature to thrive together obviously having people more involved with nature is uh, is vital to our work um, and vital to the future of the planet uh, and, and and a great way for um, to get people back engaged with nature. Um, we've got up there the sustaining vital conservation work. So at the moment we're working in urban, a couple of urban projects known as Glen Juna and Glenmore, where we've got a lot of deep thinking. I've touched on the Tivit and Ag Impact Fund and our seas and sanctuaries, traditional owners. And at the moment we're looking at getting totem species back into some traditionally owned land uh, with a, a, an immediate focus on the eastern quoll. We're really enjoying that process given that we're um, significant numbers of eastern quoll at Mount Rothwell and uh, we'll be releasing them into the Tiverton farm very soon. We work with entrepreneurs and uh, the idea of Wild Idea is inviting people with entrepreneurial ideas around recovery of nature for businesses to be mentored and to work with experienced business people and bounce ideas around with experienced business people to create businesses for the betterment of nature. So that's that's a real passion for Odenata to drive to drive that that concept and that program. We've fit, completed our second year. We had 50 participants in our second year and we're seeing that our third year is probably going to have a lot more. We've got a new uh, program we're about to launch called Nature Boss and um, I'll keep that one up my sleeve for now. We'll hopefully have the launch of that uh, very soon with the launch of our Platypus Citizen Science Program. That's the slideshow and um, um, I look forward to any questions uh, and uh, please visit the Odenata website. Um, and we're always open to new ideas and new ways to uh, tackle biodiversity recovery. Thank you.